I review many stories about runners, mostly to America and other Western countries to escape homeland woes. Today, I turn the camera on Black Americans running to Mexico. This is Addie Banks, and this is my report. For Black Americans, Mexico offers little respite from racism. Nicole Phillip, a contributing writer to The Week, April 21st, 2022. She writes, William Shakespeare's famous adage, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, was once just a phrase I had stuck in my head from that 90s Romeo and Juliet remake in which the creators made the questionable choice to use the Shakespearean language nearly word for word alongside shootouts and soul patches. But while walking the streets of Mexico, I had finally found a personal connection. The streets of Mexico, albeit in a much less romantic and far more disturbing manner, because here I was reminded that racism by any other name hurts just as much. I came to Mexico City, AKA, CDMX in April for an extended vacation and language immersion. CDMX has become a popular tourism destination. And over the last couple of years, Black American expats have been traveling to Mexico to seek refuge from racism. I later learned that expats have formed tight-knit communities in CDMX with organized events and meetups, helping to foster connection and form roots. But if the only way I could find community was through spending time solely with other Americans, then why would I pay all this money to leave Florida? This is exactly what happens when people leave their homelands. They establish enclaves to live like at home and to find connections with home, food, language, their familiars. They are not trying to become Mexicans. Phillips continues, and the idea of refuge still seemed like a reach for me because I couldn't believe like Americans could go from living in one country with well-documented systemic racial, racial issues to another with its own racial inequality and somehow have a better experience. I've been to Mexico before on vacation in Cancun and Cozumel, where I'd spend just a couple of days and had a fine time. But after living in Italy in 2013, I learned that visiting a place for a couple of days is far different from what you experience over a long period of time. I was determined to never be caught off guard again. So I took the concept of racial refuge with a grain of salt and started my journey. I had a great time meeting people touring the popular areas of Condesa and Centro Histor Historico, blowing up my followers' Instagram feeds with vacation envy photos and having my fill of tacos and other foods. But within days, I realized that refuge is probably 
far too strong a word. From stares to unwanted touching, unsolicited photos, side comments, and racial profiling in several popular central Mexican destinations, I realize racism is just as present, no matter the culture. And I'd much rather face the devil I know. Up and down the streets of CDMX, a friend of I had been asked on multiple occasions for photos. On a visit to the National Museum of Anthropology, my mother and I were certain we caught kids from different parties pointing and sneaking photos of us while their parents knowingly allowed their rude behavior. In Guanta City, we could barely make it across the colorful streets without being asked for a dozen photos, as if we were Beyonce and Kelly Rowland. But even such celebrity status didn't stop us from being followed by an employee in a crowded shop. And at one point, a young woman touched my friend's hair from behind before asking if she could do so. When my friend said no, and the offender walked away giggling as if it were a game. I simply shouted, no somos animales. We are not animals and this is not a zoo. The constant othering, the pointing, the staring, the side comments, the photos, all of these were reminiscent of how Black people and other marginalized groups had been treated like creatures in the years following colonization. Black people were looked at as animals for their features and placed on display as others can do just as they have done to my friend, my mother, and me. When I tried to discuss how I felt with a few other Black travelers, they essentially said, oh, they're just curious. But in such cosmopolitan areas with free city Wi-Fi and CDMX and decades of American TV with Black actors, the curiosity seems unwarranted. And they can call it what they want, but I'll call it racism. At one point during my stay, I saw someone in a Facebook group for Black people in Mexico City complain about similar issues and lamenting how they'd wish Black faiths had been more open about expressing the racism one might experience in Mexico. And while some commenters claim they hadn't had any issues, others simply wrote it off as innocent or said they'd simply gotten used to the treatment. But if we want get used to it, racism, as sad as that is, what's the point in moving to another country just to start all over again? One might argue what I've experienced is better than the systemic racism and police violence in the United States but it might prove difficult to say just how deep the systemic issues are for expats. That's especially true if many are working remotely, allowing them to avoid the need to climb the ladder through Mexican society. 
I wonder how many Black travelers are attempting to acquire jobs in CDMX or have to deal directly with life's facets through which systemic racism can truly show its face. And when it comes to the police in Mexico, I had been warned about crooked cops early on in my stay. And while doing my own research, I learned that brutality was common, particularly against an increasing number of Black migrants. If one is familiar with Mexico's history, with its own Black residents, the discrimination, violence, and inequality aren't too surprised. How can a country that only recently recognized its own Black population openly embrace Black outsiders? Perhaps I've already accepted that there is no racial refuge not for Black people, beyond spaces where we are the majority. And even then, if Brazil and South Africa were to serve as examples, it's still not guaranteed. Despite the abundant issues of prejudice, my experience here has been memorable and enjoyable. It helped that I was ready to address any sort of mistreatment, but I can't easily shake the discomfort and disgust I feel when being so blatantly othered. Just as I felt years ago in the city of Florence, Italy. And as I did then, the long-term exposure to this in-your-face racism made me eager to head back to what I'm used to. What do seekers seek when they leave their homelands to find better lives and elsewhere? The first question that they need to face head on is, were you invited or did you invite yourself? Nobody likes others moving in on them. We see this all over the world as curiosity feels like welcome, but turns into resentment when the number of settlers grow. Next, expectations must be realistic. If Mexico has a long history of discrimination against their own Black Mexican population and Latinx anti-Blackness is documented in the United States, why would you expect Mexicans to embrace you? The world is vulnerable to get there, better life over there coming home stories about what is available over there, and internet testimonies to leave and live better. More and more YouTube videos are telling the truth about lives of better life for so many people. There are videos warning expats about Mexico. I first came across the notion of moving to Mexico from a Stephanie Perry video, Worst Countries for Black Travelers, in which she interviewed several travel agents. Some Black women who had moved to Mexico talked about finding a better life there, away from American racism. I immediately thought, what does Mexico offer when so many Mexicans escape to America for better lives? But the statement in the article from Phillips that resonates so much for me is, I'd much rather face the devil I know. <laughs> 